So this is a viewing day at Elstob and Elstob's in Ripon. I'm going to take you on a little wander around. I've got my catalogue here and let's have a look at some objects of interest. Let me know if, if you see something I don't feature. Let me know, ask some questions and uh, let's just do it on the hoof. See what we find. So sale is tomorrow and look at this. Feast your eyes. Everybody's terribly busy. Now there is an antique stealer down there. I recognise her. She's got a shop in Ripon. Hello, Karen. Say hello. <laughs> Good morning. Now what about that? Aha, now this is interesting. Let me show you a 200-year-old tea caddy. Now here, I've got to tell you, this is a an amazing example of incredible value for money. So the auction estimate is 30 to 50 pounds for something that was made around 200 years ago to contain a commodity tea, which was very expensive. And it's original because, look, hang on, I've got to do this one-handed. Got no budget for this channel. You do realize that, don't you? Look at that, there's the two containers there for mixed tea. So it'll be a green tea and a black tea Open on the inside. Oh, we've got some party poppers. Actually, that's quite a nice sign. Can you see? That's a sign that this tea caddy has come straight out of somebody's house. So it's fresh to the market. And look on the inside. Can you see that what looks like silver foil? Effectively, it is. That is original. It's worn away over the years. But of course, that was there to protect and keep the tea in tip-top condition. You often find that these things, when later in the 19th century, when tea became very cheap, and you didn't have to have these canisters to hold it, the canisters themselves were converted into jewelry boxes or just trinket boxes, money boxes, letters, that kind of thing. And so they lost their compartments. But this is lovely because it is effectively as it was made in about 1820, so it's Regency, and it's just mellowed and aged over 200 years on its original little bun feet. And it's made from rosewood. And here's how you tell if something is rosewood as opposed to mahogany. So, simple enough, it looks like mahogany. Look at it. But then look at the grain. See how black the grain is. It almost looks like black ink stains. That's the sign you're looking for. If the grain is black, it's called rosewood. And you know why rosewood is called rosewood? Very simple. This business is not rocket science. When you cut down a rosewood tree and smell the sap, it smells of, guess what? Roses. So therefore, it's called rosewood. I'm staying actually on a Georgian theme, but we're going to go a little earlier this time. I'm going to t show you a fabulous tilt-top Georgian table in mahogany. Now, remember, mahogany was only introduced to British cabinet making in around 1740. So when this thing was made, there, we are, there it is there, look, in about, what, 1780, 1790, something like that, mahogany would have been still exceptionally expensive. And this estimated at two to three hundred pounds, showing that this Georgian furniture is still massively remarkable value for money. Seen it. And here is Henrietta, is going to do a condition report on the table. What are your thoughts, Henrietta? I thought it's, it's a nice little piece, isn't it? It's pretty. Um, this is a sort of table that, you know, 30 years ago would have made a lot more than it is. Well, I think it would have been a thousand quid, 1500 exactly. quid. And now it's at two, what is it, two to three? Two to three hundred. So we've got the bird cage support. Bird cage support, but it's interesting, it's very basic. The um, peg. Yeah, and is tilt top. I think I was just wondering about it. Should have a tilt top, should, shouldn't it? Yeah, this is what I'm trying to. Let's have a look. Work out. Oh, yes, there's something here. There's a, there's a, yeah, so yeah, it will tilt it will over. Tilt Here we are. There we, we go. go. Look at that. There you go. And then it spins round on that birdcage support. 
isn't that just fantastic? I mean, it's so usable, isn't it? It is. It's lovely. And but I'm just wondering what we really need to know is how genuine that all is. Do you think it's been whether it's been married and or, married and, or I think it will have been restored. I mean, yeah. let's have a look at those. Think? They look later, don't they? Those they do, blocks. These are unusual. I've never seen blocks like this before. Yeah. So obviously supporting the table, which yes, yeah, so I think it's been got old restor It's got restor restoration. It has, and it's obviously had a strap here. So yeah. I mean, but I think it's quite normal. After two hundred and fifty yeah. years, it's been restored probably yes. several times. I think it has. It's been well used, well loved, and and it's a, a sort of a country make rather it than. Is. Um, it's not. It's not a fine it's city. It's not a fine piece. city one. It's no. definitely made. Probably could be by a um, jobbing carpenter or state carpenter. Absolutely, the same guy that would make coffins yep. would would repair furniture and mm. make pieces taken out of design books. I mean, it's not out exactly. of a Chippendale book, but it's out of a, an 18th century design book, and they'll just and copy they, them, wouldn't they? they would in the countryside, done, and they would have somebody would have come back with a picture and said, "I've seen something like this yep. in London. Can you make me one?" Make it for me. Okay, so I think that's good colour. Genuine, genuine, but with restorations. Isn't yeah, it? that's fair enough. And it's got a, the, the gun barrel support there, yep. hasn't it? Yep. Which is nice really shaped neat. legs, pad feet. It's well proportioned. It well. really is. Yep. Are you talking about yourself, Henrietta, on the table? <laughs> if only I could say about myself. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, everybody. Two to three hundred pounds. Thanks, Henrietta. <laughs>